This daily grind, I need one wine. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. You know, life can be such a grind at times, and so we're here sharing God's Word with you to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. I have to pay. Every day of my life is such a grind. It's time to grind. So here's the host of the Grind It Podcast, the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Welcome back to the Grinded Podcast. Today we're going to pick up where we left off in uh, Acts chapter 15. Today we're going to start with verse 2. And, and the issue is here, uh, and they have this, uh, they call this meeting between, uh, they go to, I mean, this is serious stuff here. They go to the church at Jerusalem where it all began. And they're, they've got the elders of the church involved in this thing. They've got the apostles involved in this thing. They've got Jews involved in this thing that have been converted to Jesus. They got Gentiles that Paul and Barnabas had brought from Antioch involved in this thing. They they they've got Pharisees that have been converted to Jesus involved in this thing because they're the ones that actually even brought up the issue. And the issue is circumcision. And and as I said in in back in the last podcast, it goes all the way back to Genesis 17 where God made this covenant with Abraham. And that he would be the father of many nations and that kings would come from him. But to keep his portion of, uh, of the covenant, he had to be circumcised and all the male children uh, from generation to generation, all of his descendants would have to be circumcised. And if they chose not to circumcise those children, those male children on the eighth day, then God would cut them off. They would be cut off and and God would have nothing to do with them. So I can understand, and hopefully you can too, where these Jews were coming from and where these Pharisees that have been converted to Jesus are coming from. And, you know, you have these these people show up at this Gentile church where Paul and Barnabas has been working for quite some time now. And they just show up and not sent by anyone. They just show up on their own accord and they start teaching the people, hey, you, you got to be circumcised to be saved. And and they're telling these Gentile Christians who have been Christians for quite a while now that, hey, you're not saved because you, you're not circumcised. you you got to remove that flesh from, you know, from your midsection there, buddy, uh, if you want to go to heaven. And, and so... They've had this. That they've got this big meeting that's fixing to happen here in Acts chapter fifteen. And so let's pick up with verse two. And, and Luke says that Paul and Barnabas disagreed with these people who had come down and told these Gentile Christians that they got to be circumcised. It says Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them, arguing vehemently. That's the New Living Translation. The New American Standard says that Paul and Barnabas had a heated argument and a debate with these men. And so finally. The church decides to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem accompanied by some local believers to talk to the apostles and the elders about this question. And the church sent the delegates to Jerusalem and they stopped along the way in Phoenicia and Samaria to visit the believers. And they they told them, much to everyone's joy, that the Gentiles too were being converted. And when they arrived in Jerusalem, Barnabas and Paul were welcomed by the whole church, including the apostles and elders, and they reported everything God had done through them. So when Paul and Barnabas first arrived uh, in Jerusalem, remember uh, Barnabas was sent by the apostles from Jerusalem to go check on Antioch of Syria when, when, when God first started doing this wonderful thing there and saving these Gentiles. And if you remember when Saul, who is now Paul, was converted to Jesus, uh, he actually... Uh, was there in Jerusalem for a little while and everybody was scared of him and Barnabas, it was Barnabas who took Paul by the hand and said come on we're going to get this thing corrected and so he explained to the, the elders and to uh, the apostles uh, that this man who once persecuted Christians has been converted to Jesus he's had this encounter with Jesus and so now he's on our side and he's preaching the gospel he's telling people about uh, Jesus and, and, and remember they, they were going to stone or they're going to try to kill Saul and so the the Christian brethren uh, helped him escape that night and, and sent him on back to his hometown of Tarsus for uh, several years and so now Paul and Barnabas have teamed up together and they've been working with these Gentiles and they hear these people come along and say oh you're not Christians because you're not circumcised 
And they said, we're going to get this taken care of. And so they show up in Jerusalem, and they, 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 they know the brethren there well. And, and so they kind of rehearse all this stuff that God has done through them to these Gentile people and how he has converted these Gentile people and he has worked miracles in these Gentile cities and he's brought these people uh, into the kingdom. And, you know, it's all hugs and, you know, everybody's excited to see Paul and Barnabas and to hear these stories. They're listening intently to, to all these things that God is doing and they're just so pumped and they're so excited. And then all of a sudden the church people show up. You know, those people who, you know, they love Jesus, but they have to keep everything in check. I call them the party poopers. The ones who hear that awesome stuff that's going on and all they can say is, yeah, but. And that's exactly what happens in verse 5. Paul and Barnabas are telling about what God is doing among the Gentiles. And verse 5 says, but then... Some of the believers who belong to the sect of the Pharisees, you know, the churchy people, the law-abiding citizens of the church, they show up and they insisted the Gentile converts must be circumcised and required to follow the law of Moses. So the apostles and the elders, they, make, they meet together to resolve this issue. So... First of all, it's really cool that you know some Pharisees gave their lives to Jesus, and in, 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 uh, you know they didn't get along with Jesus at all. Matter of fact, in Matthew twenty-three, you just see Jesus just hammering on the Pharisees. Woe to you, scribes, you Pharisees, you whitewashed tombs! You and he's just like boom, 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 but he's just laying in to these people, these Pharisees who were supposed to be pointing people to God. But they, they were more concerned about the letter of the law and, and following the law. And not only following the law, but following the laws that they've made up. You know, because they added on to the law. And they try to make uh, their traditions law. And uh, so Jesus and the Pharisees didn't get along very well. But as, as, as far as I know, the Bible only mentions two Pharisees by name that were converted to Jesus, and, and uh, one being Joseph of Arimathea, who, uh, you know, that was the tomb that Jesus bought. He owned the tomb that Jesus' body uh, was laid in. And then we have Nicodemus, who Jesus told him, you know, you, to be born again, you know, you got to, you know, you, you, you have to uh, um, be born of water and the Spirit. And he was freaking out, saying, how can I be born again? How can I re-enter in my mother's womb? I'm an old man, you know. But he would come to Jesus by night. But when Joseph of Arimathea was there to take the body of Jesus off the cross, we also know that Nicodemus came along to help with the spices and, 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 and the ornaments and things like that to put to prepare Jesus' body for burial. And they laid him in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. So I'm not saying that it was these two guys that were making this accusation about how these men, if you want to be saved, you have to go... Uh, be circumcised. I'm not saying that at all because I'm sure at this point there's been some more Pharisees that maybe Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea have witnessed to and said, hey, this dude was the Messiah. You need to get on board. But we do know that it was some Pharisees who come to the church meeting with their laws and say, you've got to do this because this goes all the way back to Genesis 17. It was given to, to Abraham from God himself so you you got to do what God said to do. And the covenant was that you have to be circumcised. Well, I just showed uh, uh, well that in Colossians 2, that was in the previous podcast, that it's a circumcision of the heart that is made without hands. And God did that through Jesus. Is this what they, they didn't they didn't get it. They didn't understand that. And so uh these men have brought, you know, they, they've all showed up at this meeting. You got these Pharisees, you got all these Jews, you got these Gentiles that Paul's brought with him, Paul and Barnabas, and you, you got the elders of the church of Jerusalem, and you got the apostles there, and they're, they're really concerned and they want to they get this matter settled. Uh, but unfortunately, even though they think they have it settled, because they're going to come up with a solution, 
this, like I said in the last podcast, this is going to follow Paul around for his whole ministry until to the point that he uh, gives his life uh, for the gospel's sake. So they, they have what we call the business meeting. And if you've ever been involved in, in church uh, at all, they have the men's business meetings or the elders meetings or whatever, you, whatever they call it in, you know, in the church that you belong to. But if you've ever been involved in church work, you know how these things can go. Uh, just because someone is a leader in the church, it doesn't mean that they don't have their own opinions. And sometimes things can get a little heated, and sometimes they can get very heated. Um, so after listening to people's opinions, and they, they talk about this issue for quite a while, Luke doesn't say it for how long, but I'm sure it, it was... This debate went on for quite a while, for hours. And, and so after listening to the people's opinions, as so often did when Jesus was on the earth, uh, Peter stands up and he just lays it on the line. And in, uh, this is what it says in verses 7 through 11. It says, At the meeting, after a long discussion, Peter stood and addressed them as follows. Peter says, Brothers, you all know that God chose me from among you some time ago to preach to the Gentiles so that they could hear the good news and believe. He's talking about what happened at Cornelius' house. God knows people's hearts and he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. So Peter reminds them of what God did through him with the vision, you know, the the animals, the un, the clean and the unclean animals, three different times. And when he went to Cornelius' house and he started to tell them about Jesus and the Holy Spirit falls on these uncircumcised Gentiles while he is telling them. He didn't get finished with his little sermonette thing. He was telling them about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And the Holy Spirit falls on these uncircumcised Gentiles and they begin speaking with other tongues. And Peter says, well, what's keeping us from baptizing these people? And so they baptize them in water for the remission of their sins. And that's what Peter's saying here. He says, y'all know how God used me to, to go spread the message to these Gentiles, and y'all know what happened. And they were uncircumcised at the time. God knows people's hearts. And so his argument is, why are we going to challenge God when it's all about faith? Why are we going to do that? Well, we'll continue uh, Peter's uh, argument in his discussion when we come back from break. Be right back. This is Ryan Kirst. I'm the student pastor at Partnership Christian Church, and I want to invite you and your family to worship with us this coming Sunday. Check us out on Facebook or YouTube for service times and directions. Thanks for listening to the Grind It podcast. Keep grinding. So Peter stands up and he says, okay, here, guys, here's the, here's the deal. Y'all know what God did through me at Cornelius' house with those uncircumcised Gentiles. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. We baptize them in water. They're Christians. They are saved. And so he says in verse 9, he says, He made no distinction between us and them, for he cleansed their hearts through faith. So why are you now challenging God by, the burdening, the, by burdening the Gentile believers with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to bear? We believe that we are all saved the same way and here it is, by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. And so after Peter, he quits speaking, Paul and Barnabas, they're going to share some stories about how God's working in the lives of the Gentiles, uncircumcised Gentiles, and how he has performed many miracles among them. And so, you know, as the old saying goes, the proof is in the pudding, right? Well, you can't argue with facts. And the facts are that God is working among the Gentiles and they are being saved without circumcision. And so James is going to put the icing on the cake. And uh, uh, he, uh, he's, he, he uses what should be what we use. It should be our go-to, and that is Scripture. Because he's going to use a passage out of Amos and Isaiah. Because you can't argue with Scripture. God breathed it. Therefore, what God says... It's, it's what matters. Well, that's what James says. Verses 13 through 21. When they had finished, James stood and he said, Brothers, listen to me. Peter has told you about the time that God first visited the Gentiles to take, people from, uh, to take from them a people for himself. 
And this conversation or this conversion of Gentiles is exactly what the prophets predicted. And it, is, it is written, and he uses Amos, Amos 9, 11, and 12 in Isaiah 45, 21. He says, as it is written, Afterward I will return and restore the fallen house of David. I will rebuild its ruins and restore it, so that the rest of humanity might seek the Lord, including the Gentiles. All those I have called to be mine, the Lord has spoken. He who made these things known so long ago. And so my judgment, James says, is that we should not make it difficult for these Gentiles who are returning to God, but instead we should write and tell them to, and here it is, here's what we need to tell the, the, these, these Gentiles to do. Abstain from eating food offered to idols, abstain from sexual immorality, and abstain from eating the meat strangled to animals and from consuming blood. For these laws of Moses have been for these laws of Moses have been preached in Jewish synagogues in every city on every Sabbath day for many generations. So one of the many things that Paul and Barnabas encounter as they travel around uh, to these Gentile places to carry the gospel uh, were the worship of pagan gods. And we saw this in the last chapter when Paul was in Lystra and he told them that the gods, the little g, the gods that they were serving, they're not real. They're make-believe. They don't even exist. And they had a god for everything under the sun. Uh, this dates way back in to uh, the, the, the days of Egypt, uh, back when Moses was uh, still around. And, and the, the Egyptians worshipped everything under the sun, including the sun. They had a god for everything. So pagan worship has been around for a very long time. But uh, I just want to point out a few things that, that what uh, this pagan worship consisted of, uh, especially when uh, Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas would be traveling around and they would encounter these people worshiping these false gods. Here's some of the things that they would see or they would come across as they traveled around. Orgies. These people had sex like crazy as a sacrifice to a god they would they would literally go to these temples of these false gods and there would be prostitutes there at the temple and they're really if you want to call it a job but what their their priority was was having sex as a sacrifice to this false god uh, they offered animal sacrifices uh you know which uh they did that for jehovah god that's what he commanded um, they offered children sacrifices. Yes, they would sacrifice their child or children uh, as a sacrifice to these false gods. They would cut themselves and offer blood sacrifices uh, to these false gods. They made images in the likeness of these false gods and they prayed to it. And, and matter of fact, you can Google these images of these false gods, these little idols that they will uh, make. We'll see later on in another study when we get into some of Paul's letters that you know the, these people. That's how they made their money. And when Paul casts out these demons, you know they 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 want to kill Paul because he took away their their way to make money uh, because people. Uh, were worshiping these false gods and Paul's coming along saying hey you don't have to worship these false gods let me tell you about the one true God the, the real God that you should be worshiping so this was a, a reoccurring theme wherever Paul and uh, Barnabas and uh, we'll see here in a little bit they split up and it's going to be Paul and Silas and Barnabas and John Mark but these false gods were everywhere in these Gentile cities and so the things that the elders and the apostles come up with in this meeting, it pertains to the worship of these false gods. Abstain from eating uh, food offered to idols. Abstain from sexual immorality. Abstain from eating the meat of strangled animals and from consuming blood. And if you think about it, it, it just makes sense because the very first commandment that God gave to Moses up on Mount Sinai in Exodus 20, it pertains to the worship of false gods when God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the water underneath, uh, under the earth. 
You shall not worship them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, inflicting the punishment of the fathers on the children on the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing favor to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. And so they choose some people, some delegates, as Luke says, to go back to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas to deliver their decision. And the men uh, chosen were two of the church leaders there in Jerusalem, uh, Judas, we have their names, Judas called Barsabbas and Silas. And as I mentioned a while ago, Silas is soon going to become Paul's traveling companion because, um, unfortunately, Paul and Barnabas have a very heated argument. And uh, before we close out this uh, podcast, I, w- I want to talk about, about that. Um, you can read the letter, that because uh, we actually have what was written in the letter, that is read to these Gentile churches. And you can read that there in Acts chapter 15, uh, verses 23 through 29. And so this matter of circumcision for now is settled. Um, and the Gentile believers, they're all excited, you know. And, 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 uh, and so uh, they're going to uh, do what the apostles and the elders have come to agreement with. And they're going to pass this letter along. And they're going to... Uh, uh, abstain from all these things and so now that the matter is settled uh, Judas and Silas are going to hang out with the, the church there for in, in Antioch of Syria for a little while and they're going to head back to Jerusalem uh, and so after some uh, time passes Luke doesn't say how long he just, he just says after some days pass some time passes Paul decides that he wants to go and revisit the churches again that they have started. And so he goes, has a discussion with Barnabas. Barnabas agrees that that's a great idea. And Barnabas says, hey, let me go get my cousin, John Luke, uh, John Mark, and he can go with us. And Paul says, oh, no, no, no. He's not, you remember, he deserted us uh, the first time and he went back to Jerusalem. We're not, we're not taking John Mark. That's not a good idea. And Barnabas says, oh, yes, we are taking John Mark, or I'm not going. And so these two gentlemen, it's not a knockdown drag out, but it's pretty much a very in-your-face, heated argument. And uh, uh, if you read any Bible commentary, you talk to uh, any preacher, they will tell you the same thing, that when you read the Greek uh, of this passage here in Acts, that uh, that talks about Paul and Barnabas. Uh, it says uh, that um, it, they will tell you that it was a very heated moment. In fact, it was so heated. Uh, well, let me just read it for you. After some time, this is verses thirty-six through forty-one. After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, "Let's go back and visit each city where we previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers are doing." And Barnabas agreed. And wanted to take along John Mark, but Paul disagreed strongly. That's what the New Living Translation says. Since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work, their disagreement was so sharp, verse 39 says, that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas, and as he left, the believers entrusted him to the Lord's uh, gracious care. And then he traveled throughout Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches there. And if you think about this, Barnabas means the son of encouragement. And matter of fact, as I said earlier, is either in this po- beginning of this podcast or the last podcast, it was Barnabas who took the hand of Saul and took him, when everybody in Jerusalem was scared of him after his right after his conversion, it was Barnabas who took Saul by the hand, took him to the apostles and said, This dude is for real. He he's been converted. He had an encounter with Jesus. And so he, he bridged that gap between those scared people and because and Paul or Saul at the time was persecuting those people. He had been putting them in prison and having them killed for their faith. So no reason why they're scared of him, but it was Barnabas, the son of encouragement, who bridged that gap and brought these, these people together with, with this new man who's been converted. His life has been changed by Jesus. And so... If Barnabas is the son of encouragement, it's no wonder that he would want to give John Mark, his own family member, his cousin, uh, a second chance. And Paul 
for whatever reason, I don't. We we have no idea what happened. The Bible doesn't say. Many people say that he that uh, that John Mark got homesick and went home. Uh, some people say that that he was that he was the one who went to Jerusalem and stirred up a bunch of trouble about Paul, saying that Paul was going to the Gentiles and converting the Gentiles. Because this was when this first began. Uh, when the preaching of the Gentile preaching to the Gentiles first began, it it was a very hot topic. It was a very hard thing for the Jews to to accept for a little while. And so uh, we don't know what the problem was, but whatever it was, it was bad. And it got so bad between Paul and Barnabas that they said, "Hey, it's just time to separate. It's time to go our separate ways, and you know we can continue to work for the Lord." But I'm not taking John Mark with me. And so he, Paul chooses Silas, Barnabas takes John Mark, and they literally go their separate ways and they visit the churches that they had started in Acts chapter 14. And so as we end this podcast, I just want to say this. Those two men were both Christians. Paul and Barnabas both loved Jesus. They love serving Jesus. They literally put their lives on the line to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles, countless hours, countless days, and, and um, I mean, just literally have given their life to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people. Both of these men were full of the Holy Spirit. Both of these men working miracles. Both of these men preaching about Jesus, baptizing people into Christ. And yet they have an argument, a hated argument that was so bad they had to separate and go their separate ways. And here's my point. We can be full of the Holy Spirit. We can love Jesus with all of our being, with all of our might. But that does not mean that we don't have opinions it does not mean that we're going that we will never have disagreements because we will have disagreements. We are still human. We still have opinions. And and we like to share our opinions and we're selfish people and we want to have our way. And it doesn't work like that in the church. And 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 so far too often I've seen churches split over the silliest stuff because people could not let go of their personal agenda, their opinions, and they wanted to have it their way. Well, the good news is about Paul and Barnabas is somewhere down the line, they made up because Paul talks about in some of his other letters that, that how useful John Mark is for his ministry. And, and, and so that's what I want to reiterate here. As we close this podcast, who have you had disagreements with that are your own brothers or sisters in Christ? And you've just gone your separate ways and you haven't spoken to them in a very long time. You may even be sitting in the same church building with this person worshiping Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Yet you sit on one side of the building and they sit on the other and you never speak. That's not forgiveness. That's not Jesus. That's not the way we should be at all. We have to be forgiving. Yes, we can have disagreements. Yes, we may have an argument. But we have to maintain unity and keep unity in love in Christ so that God can work and continue to work in us and through us to bless other people. If we go our separate ways and we stay that way, that's not godly. We have to come together and love one another and lift each other up and encourage one another for the, the sake of the gospel. Put away our selfish desires and put God at the focal point and His will Paul and Barnabas did it. You can too. So my challenge to you is, who 
do you know that you've had a disagreement with and you've gone your separate ways and you still hold a grudge or they hold a grudge, get that thing worked out today. Don't go to bed at night without making a phone call or sending a Facebook message or a text or something saying, hey, I love you. I want to get this worked out. How can we work this out? Then the unity be brought. God will be glorified. And God will bless you richly. I guarantee it. God bless you. Keep grinding. Thank you for joining us today on the Grind It Podcast. Please feel free to share this podcast with your friends and your family so that they too can be encouraged by the power of God's Word. If you have any comments or questions, just email them to thegrinditpodcast at gmail.com. Remember, keep grinding and God bless you.